Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM, live right here in Knoxville, Tennessee on Sunday morning, June 14th, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes or Daughter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Okay. Today's verse is going to come from 463 of your book. God. Please pull it out. <laughs> Please stand. No, Please stand. no thanks. No. Please stand for the, the verse. This is very important. No? Mm, no. Well, if you're not going to do it, screw it. <laughs> there is no God. <laughs> <laughs> we had no doubt. <laughs> And our guests today are J.W. Kennedy, hello, Dread Pirate Higgs, and a new guest, Dale, or no vid, Gale, Dale, because he's got no vid going. <laughs> uh, say hello, Dale. Hi, how you doing? Doing good. And Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's been a streaming atheist call-in video show broadcasting yes. here in Knoxville? Actually, it was a TV show for like 10 years. Yes. It was video. You knew well, about that? Yeah, it's been around for a while. The character Harley Quinn came around from the Batman the Animated Series, but right. now this is the first time they gave her a own cartoon, and it's great, very, it? very good. Cartoon. It's, it's like a combination of the Batman the Animated Series plus Venture mm -hmm. Brothers. The comedy is mm -hmm. really fast-paced. Very, very gritty. Uh -huh. It is, and comically violent, but also very smartly written. It's very. I highly recommend the show. So Harley Quinn, check it out. It's on. Uh, DC animated yeah, or something well, like that. Well, it may be good, may be violent, but it's not our show. It, our show is called uh, Free Thinkers United Coalition. I never messed that up. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, just make sure. Only every week. It, it was on the uh, like I say, it was on TV for ten years, but now it's streaming online. You can find it by going to U YouTube and look for either Free Thought Forum Knoxville or Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. Check nice. it out. Uh, if you'd like to interact with us during the show, you can go to Facebook and search, search for uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send us questions and or comments. Uh, Wombat, uh, what do you have for us today? First, I'd like to mention that there's like a haunted roll of toilet paper behind your, your left shoulder that appears and disappears randomly. It sounds like I'm being random, but it's really Larry. Oh, I, no. I people can have... go through this video. If you uh, look over just your left shoulder, there it is. It, it popped up again. I don't know what's going I on. Don't, I don't believe in haunted toilet paper rolls. Oh, geez, geez, geez. We're going to have people coming the spirit out. Spirit of TP. <laughs> The spirit uh, of TP. I think it's a, yeah, it's a roll of uh, <laughs> paper towels. But. You know, I like to start off the way how we always like to start off when we have a new guest. New mm. guest, Novid Kale, uh, Novid Dale. Mm. Who are you? What are you about? Tell us your whole life story in yeah, 30 yeah. seconds. Go. Unmute. Go. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, Larry, for quite a while. I've, uh, I'm not exactly an atheist. I like to call myself a deist. Uh, and I've been that way for quite a while. Uh, it seems like it's a comfortable place for me because I appear to be reviled by, by the theist and the atheist alike. But, You're not reviled by the atheist. We know well, you. We like most you. Of, most of you are really pretty friendly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, I went on the atheist experience once, and they said, "Oh, it's just a bunch of woo," and made me feel really bad. Oh, wow. No, I, I, I don't. Anyway, I don't yeah. think so. Beyond being. Anything. With Be, beyond deism because i mean really that is just an absence of something what's t what's something positive about you like give us a give us a contrast of like what what can we fill into the dale bucket right now you're literally just text uh, on a screen what can we like what can we fill ourselves in with i i i am i am at a loss May I? Uh, what, <laughs> what does he like? since I, i've known him for quite a guess. while I, he, these an, okay, you're you're cool, man. He's yeah, an yeah, yeah. Else he's an artist. Oh, right. okay, yeah, and yeah. a writer. Okay, cool. And very good logician. Um, okay, uh, nice. Yeah. What do you write? What very what talented. what kind? What's your art, uh, panache? Well, the main thing I was writing for quite a few years and hasn't gotten anywhere is uh, how Jesus did his miracles. Oh, I believe in Jesus. 
uh, and anyway, how he did his miracle. As a wandering <laughs> rabbi, but not a miracle worker? Well, not real miracles, but right. more, across, more like tricks. Uh, if you read, uh, it, when I read the Bible, I thought I was very much into magic at the time. And I thought, well, how would someone do this? And uh, each and every one of Jesus's magic tricks, I think I figured out how he did it. As a matter of fact, it would not be that hard for a contemporary person of their day to to uh, to accomplish the same thing. With the same technology that they had back in the Bronze Age? Exactly. Mm. That's one of the things that uh, I've read his but book. But I mean, are you... Are you uh, oh, go ahead, Larry, I'm sorry. I read his book, and uh, he goes into uh, how it not only could have happened and how Jesus could have done it, but also about... He conjectures on the missing, what, 30 years of his life, 28 years of his life, that he may have gone to the middle, I mean, to Eastern, uh, like in, gone to the East, like China, and <clears throat> learned magician's tricks there, and then come back with all that knowledge of, of how they well, did I've heard things. of that before, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, it's, uh, you'll notice that John the Baptist and uh, Jesus, both of both disappeared for the same period of time. And it's appearing to me that uh, John the Baptist was actually highly well, highly educated, whereas someone living, uh, growing up in Jesus' town would have been a little bit more on the ignorant side. So uh, have the possibility that they probably switched places uh, with each other, which is, which may be why when Jesus went to his hometown, they tried to kill him. Hello? Oh. We can still hear you. Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. We're, we're, well, anyway, uh, it, it did postulate a, a number of things like that. And, and, and Larry, when Larry says it, and I hear it, it sounds uh, a little bit, uh, you know, tin hat type of thing, you know, that he went to the East and he studied with makers and stuff like that. But uh, uh, that, that, is, that is a possibility. But the if you read the Bible and read the little clues that it's in there, which it amazes me that no one else has seen it. Uh, you can tell how he cut off the ear and put it back on. And, how and then found did. the quarter behind it. And then was just like, is this your yeah, point? Found the quarter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it, it, the, the clues are all right there. I, I, Larry, he read, there's 600 and something foot in it. So, you know, it says, here is where it says this, and here's where it says that, and, and it's it's simple. And but a lot of it is that is that uh, in the reading and retellings of Jesus's story, every a lot of it has been con, uh, has been exaggerated, and it's not what the Bible says. For example, the Bible says that in three places that the guy got his ear cut off. Never once does it say he put the ear back on, or the guy grew an ear. Or anything like that. That's uh, people reading in to what's actually there. Mm. JW, what do you think about all this? Well, it's um, yeah, when it comes to like the credibility of historical events. It's just I, I was just going to ask you, like how how many of these miracles had extra biblical sources outside of the Gospels? Mm. And he's saying so this how do we know? How do we know even those events happened at all? How do we know? How do we, how can we discern what's well, legend from what's event when it, when we only have four documents and they're all they, they when as they are translated they're exaggerated saying, and changed. It's just it's hard to even establish what really happened. I mean, and just right? just to clarify, the reason why I went to JW is because he was actually studying to be a pastor. So yeah. it was. I wonder how he reconciled these ideas as he was reading the Bible. Now that he's an atheist but um dale what do you think is there extra biblical sources like b sources outside of the bible that support these miracle claims are you there i can hear, can hear you dale yeah dale larry. we're having some trouble hearing you i'll yeah, throw it up to larry while there closer gets it. to the phone yeah Larry, what do you think? Are there extra? Well, I know sources where he's Bible? coming from in the book. Uh, he he in the beginning of the book he says, "I'm going to take the Bible as it's written as truth, and mm -hmm. I will take all of the information that's in the Bible and use it as facts to debunk the the miracles that are in the book." In yeah, other that's words, huge. 
he, yeah, he doesn't uh, go to extra biblical information to try to debunk. Oh, them. so that Jesus, was his all the stuff that he needs to debunk them are right there in the Bible. Awesome. That's and what he was saying about the clues that nobody seems to pick up on. Yeah, and that's I think that's 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 hmm, that's really good. I think that that's a really good approach, especially for people who are believers. Like they can open up, it's like, oh, he believes the Bible is true, you know, or he's he's reading it as if it's truth, and then even if you believe it's true, you reading, and then they find out all this stuff, and they have to wonder, they have to decide what to do with the information. Dread, what do you think about that? Is that a good way to figure out if something's true or not? (laughs) Uh, No, I think it's uh, a little bit lacking. I think I think (laughs) it's kind of rough. I think when you start with that many assumptions, it's already. You're already yeah. in the cuckoo's nest to begin well, with. Well, I, I picked up quite a few things from the Bible that I never saw before and never thought about. It's like what he was sure. saying. Um, like when the when Jesus came back and presented himself to the disciples, nobody recognized him. I mean, mm. that right there is a huge clue. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Maybe it was somebody else coming back as him. Yeah. You know, or maybe a brother or something. And you have to think uh, the genetic also, pool wasn't that big. Right? Right. back then so like it would oh yeah right. we know you you look right. like everybody also, else here also, <laughs> what i mean by that is like it's it's a it sounds like a book that can meet somebody where they are and mm-hmm. take them to a new place right. you start out the book that way i was mm-hmm. just thinking about from the mindset of a believer um not from the mindset of a person who's already trying to right. you know Fly back on you mm-hmm. know step out i know that with a, a number of books you know one i saw on somebody's coffee table recently was uh, titled The Problem of God. Hmm. And of course, the idea of writing a book that has that as a title is that you've got the solution. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I while, I, while I can see the, the advantage from an atheist perspective of saying like, hey, this book is at least meeting the, the believer at their level. What I want from a book is to engage critical thinking. Because hmm. I think once you engage that, it doesn't matter where they go, they're using the right method to get to conclusions. So even if they get to critical thinking and come to the conclusion that there is a God, I want to know that method that they're using right. because they use the right method to get there. So mm-hmm. if I was okay. reading a book, it would be great if it was just, listen, I'm not going to make assumptions here. We're going to start from the very basal level. Like what can we establish is true? What we can't, what's a good way to know it's true? What's a good thing to know that's false? Right. All right. Here's this book. It starts with the talking snake. That's an extraordinary claim. Do we have anything mm-hmm. to support that? No. Okay, then everything else <laughs> down. It's all especially since that's the foundation of Christianity. The the, yeah. the the first sin, basically, that's handed down from man to man. Yeah. If chapter one is a dietary advice giving snake, you know, mm-hmm. like everything else is in question. Everything else is in question. Right. I have to, well, yeah. yes. And I, I mean, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, I'm in that mindset now, but all I was saying was I was just thinking about if someone was in the, the old mindset that I had, what would be mm. a good book that would meet them where they are and actually kind of expand their thinking a little bit at, at a time. Sure. Yeah. You it know? could be a good, and actually, you know, cause some, it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, my, yeah. no, you're right process it was just years and so sometimes books that are kind of safe <laughs> for this bias that we want but test us a little bit are just what we need right there in that season and l- maybe later on that book was a part of a process that led mm-hmm. us down to being on a digital free talk radio show <laughs> Dred, what do you what do you feel do you feel like if i was if i were to take the devil's advocate side and say uh no you got to stay with logic every single time if you want to try to learn things versus the empathetic approach of like hey i'm willing to make these assumptions to show you that even with this point of view it can still be valuable dread what do you think uh what's valuable one or the other what would have worked for you what might work for the general public well i think at the end of the day you know it is really about coming up with a reliable method to uh, arrive at truth um so dressing things up in order to be empathetic to somebody's uh, current beliefs has, I think, limited utility. Mm. Um, You always have to really push the critical thinking agenda uh, in order to to have a conversation that's meaningful. Mm. Otherwise, it's just fluff. I do think it can reach like that 10% that wouldn't be reached if you had critical thinking. So like, why not both, right? But I feel like... What got me out of the well, personally? One or the other. I'm just saying that it, yeah. that could have been a good book for me to read that might have led me 
down the slow process of walking out. I mean, that I could just see that that mm. book being being one of those one of those first steps. Because sometimes when you're in that mindset, it's very hard to describe. Yeah, it is. It is. When I'm when I was a legalist, and when oh, I geez. was, and it, it, it was a mixture of a lot of things. Um, I, I had I struggled with PTSD. Um, I had, I had a lot of things that happened in my childhood. I I had trust issues. So it was, it went much deeper than what, than just what I decided to believe or what I wanted to believe. Right. So I don't know. That's just, and I'm just processing this thought out loud since I, I, he's speaking his beautiful mind right now. Yeah. I, (laughs) I would say this, I don't know if I shared this story before, but, um, the way the, the first major crack for me as far as leaving my religion is when I took uh, an ethics class in college and I learned that morality is not a list of rules that you're given. It's a system that you, you keep working on. That's in the interest of the people that follow that social contract. And you can like, you can clearly see that if you just have a list of 10 rules or even like 316 or wherever many there are in the Bible, that's not enough to keep a society being moral for an extended duration of time. Cause there's always right. going to be new things that come out, new permutations, new things you have to decide as culture evolves. You need to have a system that evolves with it. And you also need to be accountable, not just to the rules or the authoritarian that gave you the rules, but to each other, because that's what makes sure that system works. Cause we're all benefiting because we're all working with each other. And when I was like, Oh, in the class, it was complete cognitive dissonance. In my head, I was like, oh, of course, you can't, just can't give me its list of rules. And you need to have a system for morality to work. And then in my head, I was like, oh, no, I let that thought sink in. I didn't want that in because I still want to be a Christian. And now when I look at the Bible, I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> this doesn't make sense. So I just said, hey, you know what? I'm just not going to read those parts of the Bible. I'll just stick with Proverbs. Proverbs has a lot of good things. And then I eventually got tired of Proverbs because it was just telling me things I already knew. It was just like the wet water is always wet when it's wet. I'm like, oh gosh, this is lame. This is lame. And so eventually I just stopped reading the Bible and that's when the momentum built. But I nearly needed that class in ethics to be like, no, morality works like this. It's like, oh, no assumptions, no nothing, no, no bargaining with myself. I just had to honestly learn something without the context of looking at through my Christian filter for me to be like, ah, Reality is not compatible with my religion anymore. I, have, I just have to deal with it. There's Del- a YouTuber named Evidence3 uh, mm-hmm. who put out a, a series of videos. I highly recommend it. It's why I'm no yes. longer a Christian is the name of it. Excellent <coughs> video series. And uh, he said that the thing that really got him questioning was he was at college and he was taking a, a morals class. Mm. And... Uh, and You're telling my story said, again, Larry. What are you doing? Oh, I just told his story, story too. Oh, okay, Not okay. just your story. All right, all right. And that's all right. why, why I should have copyrighted this it. One up. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Well, I know how to be good, you know." And and then the, finally, the teacher said, "You know, this is to teach you how to do make <laughs> the right decision when the right decision is not clear." Right. Uh, right. The moral decision. Right. And uh, he, he said it really opened his eyes and it made him question the dictates of the Bible because there's some really bad stuff in there. Yeah, I do. love it. I just feel like, so there is a path for the empathetic approach. I, I think Dell's book definitely has a place. I also think like that critical thinking approach is so, so good. Because once you have that, mm. everything makes sense. Or not everything, but like you have the tools to make anything a pursuit to try to understand better in like a reasonable way. You may not figure out the answer, but at least you'll know when to say, I don't know. And that's so much better than just being like, well, just God did it. <laughs> or I don't know how the universe was made. Right. Probably a God. Yeah. <laughs> not to, just right. poking on you and Dale. Sorry about that. Dale, are you, are you, are you back? back? <laughs> okay. It looks like he's still setting up. That's fair. So uh, I wanted to get into um, Joey's topic. Joey, what, what did you want to talk about today? Well, um, I, uh, I just real quick, I think when, when it comes to deism, deism, I think, can take many forms. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of different theories about what I mean, sometimes they say aliens in another universe or anything. I mean, I can't I think you can be agnostic and deist. But anyway, that was just my thought on that. But the main thing I was wondering, I'd like to talk about, get y'all's thoughts on is do atheists have faith in anything? Ooh, and, whoa. But we, we'd have to first, we'd have to first define faith 
what, what is an acceptable definition of faith that we have. And, what, and why don't you do us a quick favor and define atheist too, just for new people who might be watching the show. Oh, atheism is what, what we like to call at digital free thought radio. Uh, one answer to one question. It is, I do not believe. And in the words of Matt Dillahunty, I do not believe because I have yet to be given good reasons to believe. Mm. Therefore, mm. I don't believe. It is not, I believe there is no God. It is, I do not believe that gods or gods exist. There is a significant difference in, f- between that because you know, oh. when you say, I believe there is no God, you, uh, you're you getting down the road of asserting something is true. So just yeah. to real quick, uh, I, have, I have a problem with that, but go yeah. ahead. Just to real quick, like discern, we are not, at, an atheist should never say, at least I don't think they should, should never say, I know there is no God. I no. know and assert it as truth because then when you say that kind of statement, the burden of proof falls upon you. So and now you're doing the work. What's that? And now you're doing the work. It's just like, why'd you do that? You, yes. The work should be on the so, person who says, there is a God. It's it's like, oh, yeah. convince me. It's simply, we do not believe because we have yet to be seen good reasons to believe. Right. Um, and so faith. Am I back yet? But, I yeah, I hear you. Dale. I hear you, Dale. Welcome back. Your Welcome voice back. is low, but it's there. Yeah. The what's low? Your voice. It was, <laughs> oh, the volume okay. was a little that? low. That's much better. Much better. Okay, good. Hey, Boudreaux. Well, hey, I Boudreaux. Hello, Boudreau. How do you Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. Joey, why don't you wrap up real quick? Uh, so so faith, is faith by definition is believing in something for n- not any not any good reason or what seems like good reasons, but it's not, or no Belie- believing something without evidence. So when without you say evidence. faith, like a friend tells you, I did that I did such and such, you weren't present for that, so you just believe them. Because Are we all more or less on the same page for his definition of faith in AC? Belief in the absence, uh, belief is, uh, or faith is the is belief in the absence of evidence. Perfect. I like that. That's yeah. mine. That's and so mine. the question is, do atheists have faith in anything ever? Yeah. I want to know that. Dred, mm-hmm. why don't you start us off with? I, I, I'd like to sort of disagree with that just a little bit. Uh... I know you're going to be the juiciest person to talk to. <laughs> Let's just go around the circle. We're going to start yeah. off with uh, Dread, and we'll we'll get to yeah, you definitely, definitely, definitely. And I'll go last, it's, or uh, Dell can go uh, whenever you want. But Dread, why don't you why don't you chime in? It's been a while. I, I, I imagine you know um, there's plenty of uh, people who identify as atheists who have you know faith in other perhaps strange and unevidenced notions about the universe and the world they live That's in. That's fair. So um, again, you know, as JW points out, uh, atheist is one answer to one question. It right. doesn't, it's not a blanket statement. I mean, if you, uh, if you called yourself a critical thinker, then yeah. you were more apt to be a person who doesn't have faith uh, because you rely on evidence to support the convictions you hold. Cool. Nice. Larry, what do you got for us? Oh, uh, I'd just like to continue where Dredd was going. Um, there's a whole section of the world that are atheist, atheistic that have plenty of faith. Buddhists, uh, Confucius, Taoists, uh, Shintoists, uh, Jainists don't believe in God. They don't have a God in their religion. So technically, they are atheists, but they still believe in the souls and reincarnation. and uh, Pastafarians. Uh, yeah, all of that stuff. Uh, they have, they believe in that stuff without evidence. Therefore, they're using faith to believe that. But they are also atheists. Well, let me make it a little more personal then. Hold Do, on. Let's, does anybody let's, here have faith? Would it be cool if we just got uh, Boudreaux's and Dale's uh, sure. opinion before we yeah, modify yeah, the question? Yeah. Boudreau, what do you think? I think it's a, a fascinating question because this this has come up a lot in, in summits, and and it especially comes up when talking about uh, science and, and truths and things like that. Yeah. I, I think uh, one of the a- aspects where I see, well, your example of, of your friend told you something and you weren't there, I wouldn't call that faith as much trust. I, mm. you know, I trust them. My evidence for believing what they're saying is based on, you know, history. You know, well, they said it before. I mean, if they're going to tell me a hundred times they've done this and I, I, I saw that they did it, you know, the one time they did it, you know, without me being there, I could, I trust them. So is that faith? If it's faith by your definition. Well, yeah. And and just interesting, if I may, there's, we have a viewer watching our live stream 
who who makes the statement, I can have faith in my son, for example. And I think that goes to what Boudreaux is saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that is somewhat evidentiary. True. I would also think that it is. They're, they're, uh, what do you call it when you're equating it? Uh, Their equation fallacy. Um, If you look up faith in the dictionary, yeah, right. It it has several definitions. And uh, we're talking about religious faith here. We're not just talking about everyday belief in things because of prior experience, which is what that person is saying. I don't know. I'd really like to see what Dale has to weigh in on this before we okay. keep going. Dale, what sure. do you think? Just simply talking about faith, just faith without evidence overall. But yeah, I got you. Go ahead, Dale. Well, as as a deist, I choose to believe that there's some kind of God, and somebody somebody may say an origin. And uh, from the deist point of view, uh, in instead of of uh, proving that uh, God exists or proving that these religions are correct. I'm of the mind to just prove that they're incorrect. For example, the Odin and Thor and all of that has been knocked down. Uh, Egypt, Egyptian religions have pretty much been knocked down. In other words, it it almost seems like we have almost a genetic predisposition to believe in perhaps in something out there. But, uh, as a deist, I, I just choose to believe that there's a God. It's just yours is not the correct one. Uh, and and uh, it, it's when it, the deist God is, is, not, is not so much a, a guy in a beard, it could be just an origin, or it could be that the spark from another dimension or something that, like that perhaps created our, uh, uh, our universe. And, but it leaves me with a sense of, of wonder to think about it. But uh, when it comes down to other people's religions who try to sell me the snakes and all of that, it, uh, it's fairly easy to just say this is kind of ridiculous. The only reason you believe this is because it's written in that book. And just like me, they choose to believe what they believe. Hmm. Well, I think a lot, uh, that's true to some point. There are a lot of people that don't choose it. They were raised from the earliest um, childhood to believe it and told not to question it. Uh, they have to believe it as far as uh, acceptance in their community, their family, and their work a lot of times. But, uh, but there are people, uh, I'm sure Diaz uh, particularly, uh, choose to believe it. But a lot of, most times, uh, belief is not a choice. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's what has been brainwashed into you. Or what you're convinced of. Like right. If I'm convinced of it, then I believe it. There's right. no choice in the matter. It's just, mm-hmm. am I convinced or am I not convinced? And I can't choose to be convinced of something. Right. You have to convince me. I think Dale's Absolutely. saying that he's convinced. I would love to talk about that more, but we don't have enough time in this show. In fact, we're at the bottom <laughs> of the half hour. Already. <laughs> Why don't you take us out, Larry? Okay. This is WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be back after this short break. Oh, we're back at the short break. Let's see if this works. I'm going to play Digital Freak Come on. Radio Make some noise. I'm not sure if that's making noise or not, but that says 103.9 <laughs> the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hey, uh, we're coming right back, and well, let's get some local news down. Okay. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Five, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today's Sunday, June 14th, 2020, and welcome to the second half of the show. Let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. We have over 1,000 members, and you can find us online at knoxvillelatheist.org, or you can go directly to Meetup or Google and just look for Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, and you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. If you don't find one, start one. Start one. That's start right. One. <laughs> also, there's a large free thinking group in Knoxville and Oak Ridge called the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, if you want to find there more information about them, go to rationalist.org and then click on upcoming events. We also have a local chapter of the Rash- of uh, Freedom from Religion Foundation. Uh, that you can attend their meetings once a month if you like to. More information, go to uh, rationalist.org. 
Uh, earlier in the show, we said we talked about the Atheist Call in TV show. It's called right, Freethinkers. There's, there's an Atheist Call in TV show. Yeah, how about that? You never yeah, heard of we that? we should start telling people about that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's called Freethinkers United Coalition because it's, it unites ASK, RET, and several other free thinking groups here in Knoxville. And we put on an online streaming show. Right now, because of the coronavirus, it's uh, kind of in a lapsed period but we're planning to get back up and running before too long they may even decide to use our video for their shows uh, which will be okay with me no problem or if you're interested in getting involved in the tv or radio show just come to an ask meetup or a team meeting and talk to us about it you can be our next co-host or guest or you can go to digitalfreethought.com or um sorry the digital free thought radio hour facebook uh, chat and leave us a message about how you'd like to become involved. Um, that's about it. Where, where were we on our topic there, Wombat? Oh, hold on. I think we're, we're, we need to find something. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't. Guys, I can't find it. I can't find Are there it. Questions? No. Where the love? No. Where is the love? Where is the love? The love? The love? No. Where's Where the, love? Is the love? Hey guys, we have some really great feedback from our last episode. Oh, did you? Uh, cool. Yeah, uh, we had over a thousand views on our last, over a thousand three hundred views in our last um, nice. um, podcast. So thank you so much for all the support. <laughs> I've been advertising this. Everywhere on uh -huh. Facebook, so. So, yeah, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you for, for the self-promotion on our parts, but also for the people mm. who spend time watching it. The analytics right. on this are really good. Average views are like about 40 minutes through, which is, for as YouTube is concerned, that's extremely Epic. crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, you only get like two or four before you're like, what's the next video on this thumbnail? Where'd my afternoon go? Where'd my Attention weekend go? Span. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we have a good, we have a good crowd. Um, this one is, this um, comment is by comparative reasoning. He's referring to my talk with the um, um, African wonder representative or the pastor that was talking to me about atheism, invited me to a show about atheism, but then tried to preach at me at the last second. And I thought his comment mm -hmm. was one of the best yeah, ones. And he I says, remember. I'm I glad I want to tell you. <laughs> I just want to talk about faith. I'm not preaching. <laughs> the Job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, he said, comparative reasoning says, um, I'm glad I waited for this one. I wanted to be able to fully try to understand all I hear. It sucks, though. You had such a long written understanding on how to do this, this talk with him, and he simply bailed on the agreement. I understand you being former religious, uh, sir, and yet to defend this guy in one aspect He's basically doing what he's been taught to do. He's been preached at his entire life. For him, he's doing what you asked, uh, not preaching, but he's still preaching, but in the manner that he's only known of. Like he's only communicating with me in the manner that he knows of since he's been you know, born. Um, I could hear him struggling to try to understand your objective. In real time, you explained to him what you needed from him. He agreed to it and then went, went right back to the same spill. He has no other education in conversing about the topic. That's not your fault or his. That rests on the people that programmed him into this state. Uh, before I go, I just wanted to know, is there a way to inform people of that without feeling offended or them getting defensive? I believe that uh, belief is an emotion and that sees about critical thinking. Those are direct mortal enemies. What do you think about that? So do you think like, here's the question, here's the main question I was asking. Do you think like emotions and critical thought are incompatible with each other? Larry, I'll throw think, this out at you first. I think so. Um, emotions can, I mean, uh, beliefs can engender a lot of emotional reactions. Uh, mm. And that gets in the way of the critical thought. You, you basically want oh, yeah, that's true. to defend uh, your beliefs, especially if, if they're attacked, uh, and you defend them as if they are part of you. So it's self-defense yeah. mechanism kicks in, and you I get very question. emotional about that. JW, what do you got? Um why do we care about critical thinking Ooh, very good it gets us to the truth it's it's one of the it directly benefits tools. us but why do you care yeah. about the truth is there not some it directly benefits involved us involved and there's not some hunger deep within you, that you know, it directly benefits us rational I'm, I'm, knowledge that you it, just want to it is a selfish concern it's utterly selfish it ultimately benefits me mm -hmm. yeah yeah so like i can see that prospect there like there's nothing magical about the virtue of critical thought like it just well, I, wasn't saying, I wasn't saying magical i was just saying emotional emotion emotions aren't magic i mean you can prove true that true true 
this. Yeah. I would say like, there's nothing more sentimental. It's more of like that. Yes. My emotion is I want to have the best life possible. Critical thinking appears to be the vehicle to establish that. So yeah, maybe there is that one basic emotion of like self preservation, self worth that benefits and goes kind of hand with critical. And the, the, like Dale right. said earlier, the desire to be in wonder and awe. Nah, I don't care about that. <laughs> Dread pirate, what do you think? Again, again, it wouldn't be. I wouldn't consider a tool in the critical thinking toolkit. Mm. I mean, no, I would feel, also agree. You can feel emotionally about things. You can feel wonder and awe and surprise and joy mm. and and disgust and all the rest of it. But sure. as far as using those as means by which to get to the truth, I I don't. Well, I mean, I, I'm saying, can I have fun with it? I, I can't have yeah, fun. Yeah, you can. Sure, yeah, go for it, go for it. Yeah. Boudreau, what do you think? Does <clears throat> emotions and critical thought not mix well with each other? Is it I, the I orange think, juice and pizza of thought yeah. experiments? I think it's interesting because I think, I think each, each one has a, an advantage in, in decision-making, and I think you can test this pretty, pretty easily. I listened to a podcast recently where they – they they went with the trolley problem, which you know you have you have five people on a track that are about you don't to, have to pull the lever, die. right? Well, okay, uh, and and uh, if you do pull the lever, you can kill the one person. Yeah, now you killed somebody. Now you did kill pull, someone. Yeah, but by you pulling that five. lever, you just killed right. somebody. Like, congrats. Yeah. you didn't have so, to pull anything. That wasn't your fault. Right, right, okay, but um, so and we we can we can we can tweak the trolley problem to eliminate that issue where okay you you don't uh, pull the lever. But the train is either going to kill all the people my or you can pull the lever. <laughs> okay. so Negative I, responsibility. I don't have to take anything. I didn't, put my, I didn't yeah. set this up. Arrest that guy. <laughs> right, I just walked right. past this. And so I was like, whoa. And, and you know as well up. as I can, Ty, we can, we can keep doing this until it gets Hands to the Hands up. Point. I can't point. breathe. Don't try to <laughs> nail something on <laughs> exactly. me. You set this train thing up. I'm just a black guy standing here. That's screwed up. You can't do that. That's not so fair. You, we live in actually, a different world you, now. I'm not going to get away with that. You actually set this up and you went back in time <laughs> and put it on your It doesn't matter. Well, the point being, though, or, sure, or, you sure, can sure. Do a captain, or you can do a Captain Kirk workaround, and you just cheat the program. Sure, 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 okay. sure, sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but but the point is, let's say let's say it's five people versus one, and normal mm. normal utilitarians would say, okay, pull the lever, kill the one person. Yeah, that's yeah. rational. That's critical thinking. That's logic. What if it's your loved one on the other side? It's one person you love, and five people you don't know. Now yeah, emotion up. kicks in, and now yeah. it's like, well, now what do I do? Yeah, and it's like logically, you know what you should do, but emotionally, you, you can't. And yeah. and well, they they carry a lot of different directions on that trolley problem. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and like they originally set it up so that it's uh, the switch is in the position of going to five people, so you literally have to throw it. They don't set it up where it's going to one person, and all you have to do is stand there and look at it. Interesting. There's also another one where you're on a bridge and you're, yes. you're with a, a you're person. Push a fat guy and off. Yeah, you have to push a person off the bridge to Did not you say fat train. Guy? Yeah. Well, they set it up as a fat guy, uh, but but I'm just saying you have to. If you push the guy in front of the train, it would be oh, real. Oh wow! It would that it would switch it to another track, and 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 people a lot of people would would back off at that point, saying I'm not pushing yeah. anybody on no tracks, even yeah. though before they said that they pulled the the lever. There are lots of different gradients to this trolley problem. I would love to if I can. Yeah, if I can interject. Right. Isn't this sort of the same thing that a general does all the time at war? I'm going to send these guys over there. They're going to die. I know it. It's my fault or it's my responsibility, yeah. but this other battalion is going to live. Mm -hmm. I would yep. think that they would have sent the, uh, the general through the trolley problem before mm -hmm. they made him a general. So Dale, he could have yeah, uh, see where he stood on it. Coming from. Yeah. Dale, I'm interested in what's your idea of um, the compatibility of emotions and critical thought. It sounded like you had something you wanted to say earlier. Uh, it, uh, it just really irritates me if I'm talking to someone and the conversation goes on and goes on and goes on. And finally they say, well, I know it in my heart. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously some kind of a, emotional and and uh, then then you probably had no business being in the conversation with them in the first place. Well, it's an escape hatch, right? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I would say for me, there is the, like the field of triage, which is like if you're in a if you agree to the Hippocratic oath, which is I'm trying to help people as a doctor, and I'll do whatever I can to help people. But now I'm in a situation where I don't have enough resources to 
to help as many people as I can, I have to decide who gets help and who I can't help, basically. And there's actual courses that dictate the standards for triage. Like, do I help the person that can uh, go on to, to do surgery on other people? Or do I help this, like, uh, a school child, you know, like, who still needs to be, you know, prenatal care or whatever? Like, mm-hmm. you have to, like, understand that doctors have hard rules and limits that they have to follow where they, they need to, at a certain point, work in Congress with other people to come out with an informed, empathetic approach that has logical steps. like a decision a tree. Right. That way, when they're in that moment, they're not like, oh my gosh, I need to save my wife and not this school bus full of kids. What, what, are, what does my training tell me to do? Right. Despite the fact that, but so yeah. there is like, as, some... a, as a first responder, uh, the same thing applies, you know, mm. when you come upon a scene, it's about, you know, saving the most likely to survive. Right. It, yeah. You don't go start, you don't start uh, doing CPR on, on a guy that's cut in half and, <laughs> and tend to the person who's got a, a little owie on his leg or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 In Canada, they say owies. That means injuries. <laughs> in <Florida. laughs> um, I'm sorry for that. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I would say this. I value emotional thinking, but not as a decision-making process. Right. I feel like critical thought is my go-to as far as like mm-hmm. critically assessing what I should do, but I can always inform my conclusions with some empathy after the fact but I would mm-hmm. really like to rely mostly on my critical thought because that's what ultimately not only just benefits me, but everyone else around me. And my, em- yeah. my emotions tend to betray me, <laughs> even yeah. in the best case. This may be a stretch, but uh, you don't want to trust your, uh, your critical thought when you put your hand on a metal surface to decide if it's hot or not. Yeah. Right? You, you want to go with instinct there. I love and it. that's more emotional, right? So, right. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. and I, my, my, my like, yeah, but that was informed by some kind of prior evidence true yeah yeah we yeah. just but don't it, wake up a baby isn't born knowing that the stove is hot right yeah yeah and no, the, my point was that the the pursuit of truth doesn't have to be completely emotionless no of course not that's just what i was saying no but, we, but yeah okay. it's more of like if i'm starving on a beach and i'm underneath a banana tree i could eat worms or I can just climb up the tree and get the bananas. So mm-hmm. there's standards of nutrition that I can go for. Yeah. And do I, do I dig down for emotions or do I climb up and get some critical thought? I can do both, but hopefully, you know, the better stuff is, is worth the extra. I like how emotions are worms right. in this example. They are, man. <laughs> hey, you get protein, you get some protein. I, I, I like that worms. comparison because, because critical thinking isn't the natural state of humans, right? Exactly. Are. Yeah. I mean, if, if you take, uh, say, Daniel Kahneman, uh, you know, for, for some of the research he's done about thinking fast and slow, that critical thinking is something that uh, we work at. It's not something that we just wake up one morning and go, oh, here's a great methodology for discerning what is true and what isn't. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. It's very true. And it's not like a bike either. If you don't do it in a while, you can totally fall off and never know how to get back on again, right. which is why it's important to always think critically. Exercise it. Dale, what do you think? You want to wrap up this the question from Comparative Reason? Do you have any final words? Uh, I was I had one thought. One of our Colorado governors was doing something. Was made a comment that was something uh, kind of brave. He was pointing out that the old people deserve uh, no. It's the responsibility of the old people to die. And, uh, and the context he was putting that in was object. That, uh, what? <laughs> I object. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, but the context he was putting it in was the, the fact that like 90% of a person's health care is spent in the last two years of their life. Wow. Now, I believe it. That is a really cold way of looking at it. Anybody in, in, the, in the nursing home with this COVID virus going on <laughs> it would probably not have the same point of view. But uh, it, it's, it's, I never figured out why throwing the fat man on the tracks was going to stop the train. Yeah, Blood yeah. is slippery. No, it just, Blood is it's greasing the tracks. It would be the same as throwing the switch. It would just track, yeah. uh, switch him over to yeah. another track, not derail it. Mm. Yeah. But uh, Dale's comment just reminds me of uh, uh, Charlton Heston and Ever G. Robinson and Soylent Green. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite movies. Dale, Very, I have a... I, 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 Dale, I had a quick question. I'm genuinely interested in knowing the answer. You had mentioned that <clears throat> it feels like a waste of time to talk to someone who's not exercising critical thought because at the end they just say, 
I know it in my heart, right? And yes. I'm wondering, like, is there a distinction between that conversation where someone ends it with, I know it in my heart, versus someone who says, well, I just choose to believe it because it leaves me with a sense of wonder? Well, a person, <laughs> I, uh, you, you know it in your heart. It doesn't sound like you have that much choice over it. But, uh, but to have a choice, I choose to believe this, I believe is a little bit more, not, if not rational, more uh, conscious. Could someone consciously know something in their heart and, and has it more or less the same impact? Oh, well, if- I don't know. Mm. Could you be experiencing the same that. thing, if, just wording it differently? JW, I'm just going to leave this on this thought. If we don't know, why claim that there was a God at all? And I, you don't have to come up with the answer right now, but I think I that's don't something. think he's claiming that there's a God. He's saying I think that, he naturally claimed, that he believes there's a God. Why but, then? Why not? If if you if the answer is that, I don't know, yeah. Why oh. we have the belief in the first place? But we don't have to answer that now. <laughs> we got a long show. We got to wrap up. We only have eight minutes left. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can come back to this definitely. I highly recommend that you come back. Um, okay. Dread Pirate. We got eight minutes left in the show. Um, yes. Do you want to tell me where we can find your stuff at? What's going on? With well, you? right now, this is our first uh, streaming uh, attempt. Uh, so it's actually on YouTube on my channel, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll schedule this again for next week. Oh, very fancy. Next Sunday at 8 a.m. And, uh, and we'll see what kind of audience we get. We, we do have one person watching. Hey. So that's that's, that's pretty cool and a commenter yeah. too what was the name of the commenter by the way uh the name of the commenter was Dadis trading room very nice very nice yeah. and and we got a lot of feedback on last week's episode thank you so much for everyone commenting uh jw where can we find your stuff at what are you doing what's going on and why are you so in the dark Thanks right for the oh um i work nights and so i put something up on my window to make it like dark when i come home just nice. to kind of get me ready for sleep Nice. Um, but I hope to have a new camera here pretty soon yeah. and some lighting. So I you're apologize. Lucky you're a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would have been, you would have been well, a Shushu's cat, basically. <laughs> Ghost uh, figure. So you yeah. can, um, uh, no content yet. Hopefully content, at least hopefully by the fall. Um, JW Kennedy for my uh, stand-up comedy and my music. Um, speak your beautiful mind for my uh, street epistemology. I'm going to be using the same methods as Ty- Tyrone does with his um, his channel with Let's Chat. Um, you can find me on Twitter at um, JWK Hates the News, um, and also at Speak at Your Beautiful. Actually, speak I don't know that mind. one off the top of my head. Speak your beautiful speak mind. Speak your beautiful mind on Twitter. I don't nice. know the actual tag. So okay. speak your beautiful mind on you. Yeah. Cool. cool. Boudreaux, everybody loves you. Mm-hmm. What's going on? How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I keep dropping the ball, but I blame Chad. He's, I'm getting, I get comments busy. on YouTube. It was like, isn't that the guy who wants to talk about free will? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are my two popular most videos. So, I, I yeah, almost yeah, brought yeah. up. I will, I, since I don't have anything to, to, to share of how you can follow me, I will say, I think I'm told everyone needs to uh, post a picture of Obama on um, Trump's uh, Twitter feed because it's his birthday. Uh, Trump, Trump's birthday. <laughs> Hopefully, Trump's last birthday in the White House. So, put a picture of Obama on there and make his day. <laughs> uh, there are no calls to action on this radio show. By him saying last birthday, Bujo was totally not saying anything. You know, I was not. No, scary was, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I apologize. Right. I, for, I forgot. Dale, hey, um, I, I just oh, wanted to mention Ty just before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Please, uh, by all means, uh, and uh, Larry was good enough just to subscribe to Mind Pirate. Once I get up to 100, uh, then I can rename the channel to, um, you know, or I can personalize the channel. So uh, right. by all means, cool. please subscribe. I'm going to put that in the comments. Uh, please subscribe to Gary's channel when you have the opportunity to. It's actually really good content and some of the most polite, but also introspective <laughs> forms of SE possible. Not only that, but like from the very beginning to the where he's at right now, you get to see the full production timeline of like improved quality, better audio, better video. And it might make you more uh, accepting of like wherever you might be starting off with as far as putting out. Yeah, content. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Dale, thank you so much for joining the show. Do you have any like final uh, comments? And you're welcome thoughts? anytime. Absolutely. Uh, no, I have no comment. I, I really, really hate you mentioning Trump. And 
and uh, because he doesn't deserve mentioning more than anything else. And I just said it's his birthday. Derision. <laughs> Back. Yeah. Well, uh, had a good time. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Larry. Oh, so wait, I'm sorry. For me, um, I'm Let's Chat. You, if you're seeing this, you're probably already on my channel. But um, every week we come together and have these talks and it's an open talk for anybody. So if you're interested, reach out to me and we can see if we can get your comments on the show. Um, likewise, you can post videos or you can post comments here or on Reddit. Uh, just say, hey, I like this. This is pretty cool. And, you know, hey, if we got time, we'll, we'll give you guys a shout out. Uh, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next week. Larry, what do you got for us? Well, be sure to visit the digitalfreethought.com website and blog. Click on the blog button to go and see our radio show archives, the atheist songs that we have listed in there, and many articles on the subject of atheism. Um, you can also go to our Facebook page, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour Facebook, and uh, put some comments in the chat if you'd like. If you have any questions for the show, you can also email them to us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on future shows our podcasts are also available on itunes stitcher luminary podcast.com etc etc i heart as well i heart um, well that's weird i heart mm -hmm. that's weird and uh i'm gonna go ahead and uh mention everybody at the end all i guess uh dread pirate higgs so wave and say bye and uh, <laughs> jw kennedy uh, Bo boudreau boudreau the free will dale, dale. Wave and say goodbye. <laughs> Wave and say goodbye. <laughs> I am waving. Okay. Beautiful. And good to see you. Happy to have you on the show. Yeah. Everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. We'll see you next week, 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Say bye. Bye. Bye-bye.